Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Peggy. I'm glad you called. I'll have to ask for a rain check, Angel. I'm all tied up. Mm Mm-hmm. An actor friend of mine just bought himself a gun, and the way it looks now, he figures to make a big hit. The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. You met the Falcon first in his best-selling novels. Then you saw him in his thrilling motion picture series. Now join him on the air when the Falcon solves... The Case of the Disappearing Doll. And now, the case of the disappearing doll. It's Wednesday evening in New York, and in a small furnished room on Manhattan's east side, a gentleman named Carl Hoffman glares at an old clock, as if commanding it to stop. And when it continues to ignore Mr. Hoffman's wishes, he holds off and makes known his displeasure. Hey, take it easy, Carl. Don't tell me to take it easy, Sheppy. Well, you went and busted the clock. That's not all I'm going to bust either. Where's Janet? Give her a chance, Carl. She'll show. When? She was due here an hour ago. Well, maybe she got tied up with that jerk, Harry Jensen. That's still no excuse. I told her it doesn't... Get that. Yeah, I'll get it. Just a second. Hello, Sheppy. Oh, you're just in time, Janet. What's the matter? Carl, he's blowing his top. Don't worry about it. It'll do him good. That you, Janet? Yeah. Where the devil have you been? Working. You were due here at eight. There were what they call extenuating circumstances. You out with Harry Jensen? Uh Uh-huh. How'd you make out? Well, he's loosening up a little. But? He still wouldn't kick through with the information. Well, that's a nice how do you do. Well, if you think you can do better... Maybe I can. Take it easy, Carl. You too, Janet. Where does he get off bawling me out? How long have I had to work on Harry? Look, we know it's only been a week, but time is getting short. Vince Dario will be here tomorrow. Who? Vince Dario. Carl's bringing him in from Toledo for this. Why? Because he's the best man in the business, that's why. And Vince isn't the kind of a guy who'll hang around if we can't promise him action. Well, I'm doing everything I can. Yeah, sure she is, Carl. Now, why don't you two just kiss and make up? Oh. All right, I'm sorry, Janet. Forget it, honey. Come here, baby. (laughs) Uh, don't mind me, folks. Uh, grab yourself a walk, Chef. Come on, fellas, break it up. Huh? We got work to do. He's right, sweetheart. When do you think you'll have something to report from that Harry Jensen character? Well, he wanted to see me later tonight. Well, maybe tonight's the night. Maybe. How about it, Janet? You know, I think if you got him good and plastered, he might start talking. That's never been a problem with Harry. The tough thing is to make him quit. Well, get him started in the right direction, baby. And when he stops, we'll be on easy street. <laughs> Don't be such a sissy, Harry. Who's a sissy? You are. Yeah? Well, let me show you something. Give me that bottle. Now, Harry, do you think you should? Watch. Well, well, well. <coughs> How's that? Oh, darling, you're terrific. Hey, you want to know something, Janet? What? Hey, you're pretty terrific, too. I'm, I'm crazy about you, baby. Crazy enough to marry me? Say the word and we'll do it like... That. Don't tempt me, Harry. I <laughs> mean it. So do I. <clears throat> what did we live on? What will we live on? What's the matter with me? I make good dough. Eighty bucks a week. <laughs> Is that anything to sneeze at? Oh, no, that's wonderful, darling. Yeah, I'm top man with the outfit. Who do you think makes all the important deliveries? Who? Me, that's who. Go on. Don't believe me, huh? Ever hear of the McGill Company? Yeah. Well, they got a payroll of 80,000 bucks a week, and I'm the guy who brings it to them. When? Huh? When do you bring it to them? Oh, I'm sorry, honey. We're not supposed to tell. And you claim you love me. I do, sweetheart. Then tell me. Tell me when you're going to deliver the McGill payroll. Now, what difference does that make? Think I could marry a man who didn't trust me? (laughs) Say, Janet. What? Well, ain't ain't it it kind of stuffy in here? No. I... I feel awful warm. 
You know, I, I, I bet I could just go to sleep. I, don't you pass out on me. <laughs> oh, don't, don't, Janet. I, I, I'm not so bad. Harry. Yeah. Harry. <laughs> the McGill payroll. When do you deliver it? Yeah. Friday. Friday at two. Looking for Carl Hoffman. Well, who are you? It's all right, Sheppy. Let him in. Hiya, Vince. Hello, Hoffman. Sheppy, Vince Dario. Glad to know you. Thanks. When'd you get in, Vince? About 20 minutes ago. You couldn't have timed it better. Got something hot? Mm-hmm. Did you ever hear of the McGill Company? The people who make all those plumbing fixtures? That's right. Don't tell me you're figuring on knocking them off. That's what I'm figuring on. I wish you would have told me that in your letter. Why? Because I wouldn't have wasted my time coming to New York. Let him go, Carl. Shut up, Sheppy. Now, before you make up your mind, Vince, maybe you ought to hear the deal. There's no deal where you have to walk into a plant like McGill's. We don't have to walk in. We grab on the outside. Come again? The messenger who delivers the payroll is a character named Harry Jensen. We know to the minute what time he'll get to the factory. Now, you interested? I'm still here. They're tearing up the street in front of the place, so he has to park his bus a block away. Now, he'll come down Remsen Street. That's where you and I take over. Sheppy will be covering the street with a Thompson from a vacant room across the way. Sounds all right. It gets better as it goes along. Now, we give the dough to Janet. Wait a second. Who's Janet? A girlfriend of mine. I don't like it, Hoffman. What's the matter now? I don't like any caper where a babe is involved. You don't know this babe. How do you think we find out when they're going to deliver the payroll? Oh. Yeah. She's a real stylish kid. What's her last name? Halsey. Wait till you meet her. I'd like to very much. It's all up to you, Vince. What do you say? We got the time, the place, and a girl. What more can a fella ask? How does she handle, Janet? All right, I guess. You guess? Well, I never did like driving in this kind of weather. Don't be silly, baby. It's going to make things a lot easier all around. Right, Vince? Sure, the rain will keep them off the streets. Whoa, sweetheart, wait a minute. Right here will be fine. Should I shut her off? I'll keep her running. And remember, when you start off again, go right into second and don't feed her too much gas. Yeah, I got it. What time is it, Vince? Uh, make it a couple of minutes or two. Mm-hmm. You see Sheppy across the street? I think so. Well, that does it. Are you sure you know what to do, Janet? Yeah, as soon as I get the bag, I head straight for my apartment. That's right. Don't hang around no matter what. We'll all be over to your place by nine to divvy up. Supposing you aren't. Don't give it a thought, sweetheart. It'll take more than... What? Is that our friend, Harry? Where? On the corner. Yeah, that's him. All right, Vince. Here's where we go to work. Lots of luck, honey. Thanks, baby. Give me a cigarette. Yeah. Where's that lighter you're so proud of? Oh, what do you know? It works. Here he comes. Hey, buddy. Me? Yeah. Can you tell us where Tremont Avenue is? Oh, well, uh, you're on the wrong side of town, mister. I tell you what you better do. No, I'll tell you what you better do. Don't make uh, a move, bud. Not even a teeny one. Hey, what is this? Just what it looks like. Pass that grip to my friend. Go on. Sorry, pal. You know how it is. No hard feelings, I hope. Oh, that's all right, mister. I got a good memory for faces. I won't forget you. In that case, let me give you something else to remember me, boss. Who is it? That should be up enough. Hello, Carl. Vince. Hi. Went off like clockwork, didn't it? Yeah. Where's Janet? She ain't here. Huh? What? No, no, no. I was the first one in. It's lucky I had a key to her place, huh? And you're lucky I don't have a suspicious mind. Well, I have. Did she phone in? Uh-uh. You told her to come straight here, didn't you, Carl? Yeah. Well, you don't think she had an accident, do you? No, no, no. We would have heard about it. I had the radio in the car tuned to the police calls. But if the cops snapped her... You kidding? There was nobody within miles of her. After you chucked the bag into her car, she took off. She'll show up, Vince. She better. She's got all the dough. 
Just what are you getting at? You told me yourself she's a very smart girl. Women who are beautiful shouldn't be brainy. Meaning? I think we got a double cross. You're nuts. I'll leave it to Sheppy. No, no, no. Janna wouldn't do that, Fence. Why not? Well, well, because she never did it before. Did she you... ever have 80 grand before? Look, what are you worried about? It isn't even 9 o'clock. Well, suppose she doesn't show by 9. Then I'll start looking for her. And if she isn't dead when I find her, she'll wish to heaven she was. You guys got a butt. I'm fresh out. There's a pack in my coat pocket, Sheppy. Thanks. Carl, you wouldn't have anything else in that pocket. Like what, Vince? Like 80 grand. Pardon me for pointing, but it's 20 after 9. Your girlfriend hasn't shown up yet. So? So I think we ought to start looking for her. I suppose she comes back in the meantime. You can always leave a note. No, no. I think one of us ought to hang around here. Who, for instance? Why, do you want to? Maybe I better. Okay, you wait here. Sheppy, you cover the east side. You know the places Janet likes. I got you. What are you going to do, Hoffman? I got an angle I want to try. Like what? Never mind. But if Janet's tossing us a curve, I think I know the one guy who can throw her out at home. I'll let you know how I make out. Yeah? I'd like to see Mike Waring, the Falcon, please. You are now. Oh, well, uh, my name's Carl Hoffman. Yeah? Uh, can I come in? Oh, sorry. Thanks. Sit down. Much obliged. Now, what's on your mind? Well, I'm looking for a girl. Aren't we all? No, I mean, this is a special one. Her name is Janet Halsey. Janet Halsey? Yeah. She's my girlfriend. Well, maybe we better take this from the beginning. Well... Janet and I were supposed to be married next Sunday. So I opened up a joint account for us at the bank. How big? $2,000. And she skipped? Mm Mm-hmm. This morning. She lived at the Brighton Towers. How do you know she didn't meet with an accident? Well, she's done the same thing before. Oh, she has? Yeah. She served three years in the women's penitentiary under the name of Lois Hart. She got out in 48. Well, how come you trusted her with your money? Well, you know how it is, Waring. You always hope that this time it's going to be different. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, I'll see what I can do, Hoffman. As you say, the first problem is to locate the girl. Yeah, and the moment you do, will you give me a call? I'll be waiting at the Brighton. Brighton? Didn't you say that's where your girlfriend lived? Yeah. I'm using her apartment to operate from. Uh You see, I wouldn't want to miss her if she came back. Well, I guess that does it, Falcon. I'll be waiting for your call. to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Carl Hoffman recruited Mike Waring in his search for Janet Halsey. And now as we find Mike, he is making a tour of some of the shadier spots on New York's 3rd Avenue. You're looking for someone, mister? As a matter of fact, I am. Falcon. Hello, Joey. A long time no see, pal. What can I do for you, Mike? Well, you're a man who knows all the wrong people. Ever hear of a girl named Janet Halsey? Huh? Huh. We seem to have an audience. Yeah, and I like your act, mister. Only I missed the last line. Would you mind repeating it? Now, cut it out, Sheppy. This is Mike Waring. I don't give a rap who he is. What do you want with Janet Halsey? I don't think that's any of your business. All right. Suppose we take a little walk outside. No, thanks. It's too hot. That's all right. I got something in my pocket to chill you off. Now, take it easy, Sheppy. Just keep out of this, Joe. What do you say, Waring? I don't seem to have much choice in the matter. No. So start walking. I'm sorry, Mike. It's all right, Joey. All in a day's work. Quit gabbing. Come on, I haven't got all day. Look, if you'd like to put this off for something. I'll other... be a wise guy. Okay, where do we go from here? Let's try that alley. Now, look, Fred... you heard me. All right, hold it. This is fine. Now, let's pick up where we left off. What do you want with Janet? It's a long story, Sheppy. Mm-hmm. It's okay, you're not going anywhere. Oh, I might surprise you. Here, let go. Get that hand out of your pocket. Let go or I'll what? All right, punk, on your feet. Let me alone. I said on your feet. Why are you so interested in Janet Halsey? 
Maybe I'm looking for her, too. Maybe. And then again, maybe you know where she is. No. Where can I find her? I got no idea. Well, get one. <laughs> Let me go. Come on, Shep. You can keep this up all night. <laughs> Have you been to the Brighton Towers? No, but someone else has, and she wasn't there. Well, you might... You might try the Riverdale. Apartment 4E. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, fella. You've been a great help. Let's do it again sometime. Where's Shepi, Vince? Out looking. Did he phone in? No, I guess he had nothing to report. How did you make out? Not so hot. I guess that leaves me up the well-known creek. What are you griping about? We're all in the same boat. Yeah, but I didn't bring Janet into the act. You did, Hoffman. Okay, and I'll find her. I don't see you making any progress. Maybe not, but I hired somebody who will. Who? A fellow named Mike Waring. A private dick? That's right. What's the idea? You going off your trolley? Relax, will you, Vince? I gave him a song and dance about wanting to find Janet. This guy wearing has plenty of contact. Well, I don't like it. And you're the boy who was belly aching that I wasn't doing anything. You didn't have to go that far. Oh, no, how far would you go for 80 grand? Yeah, I guess you're right. Thanks. That must be Sheppy. I'll take it. Yeah, what do you want? I beg your pardon. I must have the wrong number. Wait a minute. Is that you, Janet? Hello. Hello. What's the trouble? I think that was Janet. You're imagining things. Don't tell me. I'd recognize her voice anywhere. What made her call and then hang up? You know something, Vince? That's just what I was wondering. I'll be back in an hour. Hello? Hello, is this Janet Halsey's apartment? Yeah. Carl Hoffman there. Who's calling? Mike Waring. We just stepped out for a while. Want to leave a message? Who's this? It's okay. I'm a friend of his. My name is Vince Dario. I'll tell Hoffman I've got a lead on his girlfriend. She's supposed to be at Riverdale Arms. If you'll meet me at the 86 Club, we'll go over together. Thanks a lot, Mr. Waring. I know Carl be glad to hear that. It's about time, Hoffman. Sorry, I'm late, but I just got your message. Where'd you get your dope from? A punk named Sheppy Oliver. What? Yeah, he pulled a gun on me. That's the funniest thing I've heard yet. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Sheppy's a friend of mine. Oh, is that so? Sure. When he heard you asking for Janet, he must have gotten suspicious. Why? Well, he's not very bright. What was that address he gave you again? Riverdale Arms. That's what I thought. It's a bump steer. How do you know? That's where Sheppy lives himself. Why would he give me his own address? Probably rattled him so badly. It was the only thing he could think of. Well, that's one possibility. Can you think of any other? Yeah, maybe Janet had a partner. You mean Sheppy? Why not? He's my best friend. Uh-huh. Janet was your best girl. Let's go see who's playing on whose team. Four A, B. It's the last one down the hall, wearing. You know, there's one thing that throws me. Only one? After I left your office, I went back to Janet's apartment. I was talking with Vince Dario when the phone rang. So? A girl got on. I would have sworn it was Janet, but she claimed it was the wrong number. Well, maybe she was trying to get in touch with Sheppy, and she got frightened when she heard your voice. Could be, but I never thought Sheppy was her type. This is the place. I just can't believe that he... Hmm. What's the matter? Unlocked? Yeah. Yeah. Just as I figured. Well, I guess I better call the police, huh? Well, what's the matter? Take a good look. Holy smoke. It's Sheppy. Yeah, and with that slug in his head, I don't think he's in any position to call the cops himself. Where's the phone? <laughs> Come on, Vince, open up. Take your What took you so long? I was busy. Who's your friend? Oh, that's right. You boys haven't met. Mike, this is Vince Dario. How do you do? Hi. How did that lead pan out? Not too bad. You find Janet there? No, we found Sheppy. I don't get it. He was murdered. Murdered? 
By who, Janet? That's one way to look at it. Bill Raniata? Yeah, I suppose Janet was working with a man. If you mean Sheppy, I don't see it. That's just what I said. Look, Carl, suppose we forget the whole thing. What do you mean? We gambled and lost. Oh, you surprised me, Vince. A couple hours ago, you were balling me up and not doing anything. Now you're willing to write the whole thing off. There's no use crying over spilt milk. Sure. With 80 grand in your pocket, you can always buy yourself another quart. Oh? You say something, Waring? Just oh. Look, Carl, you've been hinting at something all along. What is it? I think you know where Janet is. You're crazy. I was a sucker not to see it before. Don't be a fool, Carl. Can't you see what Janet's doing? She might have, Sheppy. Now she's turning us against each other. Well, somebody put her up to it, and I got a feeling it. Shoot! Quit it, quit it you joke! Cut it out, Hoffman. Out of this, Mike. Where is she, Vince? Come on, Hoffman, break it up. Mike, let go. I said break it up. Okay. Dario. What was the idea, Hoffman? I don't like double crosses. Get the keys out of his pocket. What for? I got a hunch Janet is holed up in his apartment. And I'm going to play it to the hilt. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Only a few minutes have passed since Carl Hoffman decided that Janet might be hiding in Vince Dario's apartment. Now he and Mike are at Dario's, but so far there's been no sign of Janet. Well, looks like your hunch was worthless, Hoffman. Did you try the kitchen? I've been all over the place. There's no one here. I still believe that Janet was... Uh, wait a minute. Open that drawer again. Hmm? I thought I saw an envelope in there. Yeah, you're right. Mr. Vince Dario... 2719 Bolton Avenue, Detroit. Look at the postmark. Bedford Hills, March 16th, 1948. Now look at the return address on the other side. Janet Halsey, State Penitentiary for Women. Uh Uh-huh. You get it? And I was right. Vince knew Janet all along. Well, you could build up a convincing case on the face of it. Yeah, but where is she now? Why, can't you think of somewhere she might go? Oh, we've covered every possible hideout. No, we haven't. There's one place you're forgetting, Hoffman. Whose? Yours. What are you talking about? You're the man who put Janet up to this. You planned to double-cross your mob from the beginning. Yeah? Yeah, and I thought you did pretty well. You murdered Sheppy and framed Vince Dario, and that only left Janet to be taken care of. What about you? I don't think you're man enough. That just goes to... <laughs> What's the matter, Hoffman? You lose something? That's what you're looking for? Where'd you get that gun? I lifted it off you when you were shoving Dario around. Just say the word, friend, and I'll give it back to you. A slug at a time. Well, what happened after that, Mike? You know the rest, Janet. As soon as the police picked up Carl, I went to his apartment. And picked me up. And not a bad day's work at that. Thanks. No, no, I'm talking about the little bag you had with you containing 80 grand belonging to the McGill Company. Oh, now, what gets me is how you people knew exactly what time the payroll was to be delivered. Oh, I had inside information. From the boy who delivered it? How did you guess? It figured. What did you do? Use your feminine wiles? It didn't take much. He wanted to prove what a great big man he was. Mm-hmm. Well, you have that effect on the opposite sex. Do I? Yeah, it's just too bad you had all your work for nothing. Yeah, I guess when you come down to it, I was pretty lucky at that. You sure were, Angel. There's no doubt that with Sheppy and Vince Dario disposed of, you were next on Carl's list. Dirty double-crosser. No, no, no. There's no reason to be angry. After all, you were in on 99% of the plot. He just neglected to tell you the big finish he planned for you. Oh, incidentally, when you called your apartment and got Hoffman on the phone, why did you pretend it was the wrong number? We had it arranged. When Carl picked up the phone and said, yes, what do you want, I knew he wasn't alone, and that was my cue to hang up. Mm, Pretty cute. (laughs) That was the second way he convinced Dario he was acting above board. What was the first, Mike? Hiring me. He had to go through with the motions of trying to find you, and what would make him look more innocent than hiring a private detective? I still don't see what proved you he was guilty. Well, the return address on the envelope I found in Dario's room gave your name as Janet Halsey. And Carl told me when you were up at the women's pen, you served time under the name of Lois Hart. So, obviously, the letter was a frame. And Carl was the only one who could have planted it. That's right. You know, you're pretty wonderful, honey. I mean, uh, Mr. Waring. Oh, I don't mind you getting affectionate. After all, we're going to be seeing lots of each other, Janet. 
Are we? Mm-hmm. Oop, almost past our destination. Is this where you live? <laughs> What's the matter with you, Janet? Don't you recognize the building? It's police headquarters. That's right. Why, you no good double cross... Now, cro- now, now, what are you complaining about, Angel? I promised you we'd be seeing a lot of each other. Can I help it if for the next ten years it'll have to be through bars? Mm-hmm. 